Welcome to the next video of the inventory spreadsheet for high volume makers, batch sellers, etc. In this video, I'm going to walk you through what to do on your spreadsheet when you actually have a finished good created from all these raw materials and supplies. So let's say I'm a seamstress, I have made a dress and I am ready to enter it into my spreadsheet. First things first, I'm gonna head over to my cost of goods made formula calculator and figure out how much it costs me in terms of raw materials and supplies to make. So I'm going to enter a simple description for it. So what I'm gonna do here in these columns is figure out the cost of each of these materials that went into my finished good. So in order to do that, we're just going to write really simple formulas that you are totally capable of doing. And all formulas are going to begin by typing the equal sign on your keyboard. So let's say that I use two feet of fabric in this dress. I know that I use two feet. Um, so again, I know that I entered all my fabric in square inches. So if I use two feet, then that would be the equivalent of 576 square inches of fabric in this dress. So my goal is to figure out how much two feet or 576 square inches of fabric cost in this dress. So in order to do that, I'm gonna type a simple formula starting with hitting the equal sign. All formulas in spreadsheet software start out with the equal sign. You never wanna use a space in a formula, you always have no spaces and they always start with equal signs. So I hit equal, and now my spreadsheet software is starting to look for things to link to. I'm not gonna click anything on this tab, I'm going to navigate over to my fabric tab and it's still looking for something. And I use this yellow sunflower fabric. I'm gonna click the per unit cost of the fabric I used and check it out now that that now that fabric h3 cell that cost is over here in my formula tab and like i said i know i used 576 square inches so i've got to tell excel to multiply that cost per square inch for one square inch by 576 so to multiply we always use the asterisk key um, so you're going to shift and then the number eight on your keyboard is where the asterisk key usually lives and then 576 and now I can just hit enter and it's going to calculate that for me. So see, I can see what the formula looks like now. No spaces, starts with the equal sign. It's basically saying that this is the cost of one square inch. If I used 576, then I must have $5.33 worth of fabric in this dress. I've got a zipper, so I am going to hit equals and go look at my zippers. I used a 10 inch zipper. One 10 inch zipper was $4.50, so I can just click that and then click enter. That takes me back to my cost of goods made tab. That's how you end the formula, you just hit enter. So let's say I use some buttons. Let's make things a little more complicated. Let's say I used multiple buttons on this, on this tab. I can add them together with my simple formula. Let's say I used one star button, so I click it, and then I'm gonna do plus. I'm just writing a simple equation here, and I used one heart button. So I've got star button plus heart button, then I can hit enter. So I used $4.62 of buttons. Now, if I wanna make things more complicated, let's say I use two star buttons and two heart buttons, just to show you all the scenarios. I can write a simple formula again to show that, but I'm going to put things in parentheses. So I have equal sign and then open parentheses. I use two of my star buttons, so I need to multiply by two. Then I need to close my parentheses. Remember the order of operations that we learned in like sixth grade. Then I'm gonna add my heart buttons, also in parentheses, times two, close parentheses. So now I've got a nice, neat little formula here for all the buttons that I used in parentheses. And I can see that this dress with $9 of buttons 
$4.50 in zippers and $5.33 of fabric cost me $19.07 to create. Now I've got this weird units in batch column here. So let me explain this. In this scenario, I made one dress. This is the cost of one dress. There is literally only one dress that I made. So the cost of the individual dress is $19.07. Even if I go on to sew five more dresses, I do not want to put a five here because all that's going to do is take the cost of one dress and divide it by five to get 381, which means nothing because it's dividing. So this is about how many you just costed out right here. If you figured out the cost of one item, you just need to put a one here and it's just going to tell you the same number again. This comes into play and is helpful if you're making things in batches. So let's say I make soap, for instance, and I'm making an entire batch, you know, a big log of soap, and I figure out that that costs me, so I'm just like totally making up some numbers here, and I figure out that I have $25 of raw materials in that soap, but that batch of soap, it's gonna get me 10 pieces. So now I know my cost per bar of soap because I could put in the units in this batch, this $25 batch, and figure out that I got $2.50 per item, per bar of soap. So this batch column might be useful for you depending on what you're making, or it might just be you're putting one here and you're getting the same exact number. It really just depends, but I want you to be able to have this this flexibility in there in case you need to be able to divide. If you need to take this cost and multiply it because you created multiples of these things, we'll do that over on the finished inventory tab, so don't worry about it. So the next thing you wanna consider after you created a finished good, you've got it on your cost of goods made tab, the units used is not going to automatically update itself when you create a new item. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to build a spreadsheet that magically knows, hey, you linked over here to the sunflower fabric, please reduce my sunflower fabric by however much I used. So now is the time when you're creating the finished good to go in and say, I used 576 square inches of that fabric. So let me put that in units used. Let me reduce my units remaining. My cost of units remaining is now up to date. Same thing for my zipper. I just used one of these. That's gonna update itself. And then with my buttons, I used two of each of these. So they will update. So the bad news is this number doesn't automatically update. But the good news is, is that if you're worried about getting everything right for tax purposes and you find that it's tedious for you to go in and update this units use column every single time you create something, you don't necessarily have to. If you're not keeping track of your units remaining so that you can know when to like reorder supplies or when things are getting low or whatever, you don't have to be keeping this updated. The only time you really need to do it is at year end when you're trying to get your cost of units remaining number correct for taxes. This cost of any materials number is what you're going to need to rely on right here for your tax return. So you really only need to worry about getting these numbers up to date at year end when it comes time to do your taxes. If you want to just ignore it year round because it's too tedious for you to update continuously, that's fine. Just know that no matter what, whether you keep this updated or not, at year end, which is usually 1231 for us, you're gonna to need to go through and update this number so that it's up to date for taxes. The next thing to do after entering your finished product on the cost of goods made tab and perhaps reducing the materials used for what went into that would be to use the pricing tab to figure out a profitable price point for that newly finished good. And I'm gonna skip that for now in this video because I'm gonna have a whole separate video about the pricing tab and the overhead tab and just using the pricing formula in general. But since I know a lot of people may skip this step, I'm going to go straight over to entering it on your finished goods inventory tab. And remember to pop over and watch the pricing video if you decide that you wanna use the pricing components of this spreadsheet. 
So I just finished making this sunflower toddler dress. I came up with the cost of the dress. Now I'm going to go over to my finished inventory dresses tab and enter it on here. And if you don't wanna retype everything every time, you can totally link to the description that you already entered if you want to. And if you don't want to, that's fine too. So let's see, I made a sunflower toddler dress. Um, and then I'm gonna say that this was a size 3T. Uh, and I calculated my cost of goods made on that other tab. I can type it in here manually if I want to, or I can link to it. To link to that cell, all you have to do is type another simple formula, beginning with the equal sign, always beginning with the equal sign, then navigate over to your cost of goods made tab and click on whatever cost you're wanting to link to. So I referred to this 1907 cost of this dress and then I'm gonna click enter and voila, my cost of goods made is there. If I already know the retail price that I want to set, I might put that in here. If I use the pricing formula tab, I could even link to it, just like I showed you with the cost tab. I don't have any beginning year units. This is only applicable if you're entering in inventory from last year. And so far I've created one. So that is how you would enter your finished item after it's made on this spreadsheet. Um, you might have multiples created, like maybe you went through and sewed five of those, so you could enter five for the quantity, quantity created. If you create more of these and they have an identical cost and it's the same 3T, you could just increase this. This number is cumulative for the whole year. So as you create that same good over and over again, you can just create this and it will increase your cost of ending finished inventory right here. So this is basically how you deal with creating a new handmade good from start to finish. You figure out the cost of goods made from linking to all the different materials that went into the good and then you enter it on the applicable inventory tab. So now we've got this finished item showing up in our cost of finished inventory.